All right, Mr. Ben, are we ready? I think we are. All right, let's get started. We are in segment four of structural geology. It mm -hmm. just keeps getting better. Oh, you Doesn't know it? it. I know, you're right. Uh, so our learning objective for this, uh, for this segment is that I can explain the formation of five types of mountains. Five types of mountains. I didn't think there were five types. Yeah, Mr. Oh, man. Ben. If they're they're going to have to learn some of those for this uh, activity with uh, Google Earth coming up. Yeah, they are. They're going to have to uh, know how to uh, identify uh, the different mountain types. So they'll need to know how to where to look on the Earth, have a little idea, kind of like the convergent, divergent boundary mm -hmm. to, to figure out where they could find these. And the characteristics of each of the mountain types. So they sure. should listen as we go through and, and keep their ears open for like convergent, divergent, and then they'll need to know where to look yeah. on the Earth. All right, let's get to the next slide. Hmm. Uh, that's a really good words with friend word, I think. I think it is, too. Oro means mountain, and Genesis, um, that's what? The, to the, come into being. Yeah, the beginning of something. So Oro Genesis is like a fancy schmancy word for what? Like mountain building? Yeah, for it? building mountains, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, it's a, it's a huge word in geology. Um, Orogenesis and then orogeny as well. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that we'll, we'll uh, talk about a lot uh, in this in this upcoming unit. Here. So, like in this past slide, so like this big chunk of, of land, it could have slammed into that chunk of land and like pushed up all those mountains. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened, and that's uh, and that's an orogeny. That's a mountain building event. So that's an example of orogenesis. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, types of mountains. Uh, we've got fault block mountains. And that would kind of be like the blocks we looked at in the, or that we had in the last um, series, where you actually, um, like the, the, the blocks that yeah, uh, you're right. And you're right. And we, uh, Mr. Watt and Mr. Baldwin talked a lot about faults, normal mm -hmm. faults and reverse faults, and then they talked about uh, thrust faults as well, mm -hmm. right? And uh, well, let's just take a look at the slide and make sure that we have everything down. Mountain belts formed by extensional forces. Mountains are associated with high angle normal faulting, normal faulting, and then we've got some examples written there as well. So normal faulting, which way are those faults gonna, or those blocks gonna move? So it's an extensional first. So if we extend, we're kind of pulling them apart. Yeah, we are pulling so apart. So it's like if I kind of pull it apart, it kind of drops down. Yeah, it does. And then which one is going to be the hanging wall and which one's going to be the foot wall? Well, there'd probably be another block kind of here. Yeah, so if there was right. another block here and we pulled everything apart, this would kind of like fall down. Yeah. So you'd have a block way up here and a block way down here and kind of a block over here. Uh-huh. And it kind of fall down. That would be like these fault block mountains. Yeah, and you can see that we have a, 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 a at least a, a rock structure here that's higher than the rock structure over mm -hmm. here, right? So kind of like a mountain. Mm -hmm. So this occurs on a real large scale sometimes, and uh, and when it does, we can create these huge mountain ranges with uh, tensional forces. I agree. So here are some examples of what of some places where they could find fault yeah. block mountains may come in handy later on when they're doing their Google Earth. Yeah, activity. Definitely. So again, you're kind of pulling things apart. You said your tensional stress and some of those blocks are falling down. Yeah. Excellent. All right, the next one here are folded mountains and they're a result from large scale compressional forces. Rock units are shortened and thickened as a series of synclines and anticlines forms a mountain block. That's tying in the last the first two segments, right? Isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. That's a lot. So we got compressional forces, mm -hmm. we've got anticlines and synclines. You and mm -hmm. I talked about those, mm -hmm. right? And um, and we're talking about the thickness of the beds as well. Mm -hmm. Huh. So let's uh, let's use this diagram and see what we're talking about. Well one of the things I'm I'm thinking that's interesting is these could actually be formed in places where the continents maybe are no longer together anymore. Yeah. Like if Africa snuck up on us and slammed into the coast, there'd be a lot of force pushing in between. Yeah. And that could make kind of this shape. Yeah, definitely. And we can see that if we if I keep this, we have our anticline here, and then we have our syncline or our smile over here. And if we continue to push, and if there was a lot of layers or a, a lot of land either towards Mr. Ben or towards myself, we would kind of get like this almost rippling effect and alternating anticlines and synclines, all right? And all do because Mr. Bin is pushing towards me and I'm pushing towards him and we're just folding that rock together. 
So that's got to take a lot of time, Mr. Ben. A lot of time and a lot of pressure. Yeah, and you know what? And I don't think that doesn't look like brittle deformation. Does oh, no, because there'd be a lot of faults involved, and this is a fold. Yeah, so that's actually ductile. Those, those uh, rock layers are actually staying together, and uh, with a lot of pressure and time, um, they begin to fold. So they might be able to find these in places like the Appalachians, which that continent, Africa, is no longer against us. It's mm -hmm. kind of gone away. But they could find it in another place where, ever, where the mountains are still growing because I think these have stopped growing. Yeah. Um, one of my students asked me today about the Himalayas and said that they heard that they're still growing. Could that perhaps be an example of you know, where they slowly are pushing together or coming together and these mountains are growing up? Yeah, well, that's where I think the Indian and the Eurasian plate, I think there's a convergent boundary there. Mm -hmm. I think you might be right. And we, uh, we know that from the last... Uh, yeah. the last uh, set of segments yeah. before. The Indo-Australian plate coming mm -hmm. together Definitely. with the Eurasian plate. Okay, this one, uh, volcanic mountains. Now we're looking at this big cone kind of shape right here. So these would be more where you had, what, one plate? This was way back when we were talking yeah, about this before. One plate's diving under another one. It comes down here, it melts. When it comes up, it makes kind of these series yeah. of volcanoes. I think that's the subduction zone you're talking about. And mm -hmm. I think one plate is subducting underneath the other. And they're and coming together. Yeah, so, so that's definitely convergent. Mm -hmm. And this plate going underneath is getting destroyed, mm -hmm. right? And it creates a lot of volcanic activity. Uh, up on the surface, mm -hmm. right? And volcanoes, we know that they erupt and a bunch of stuff comes out of them, right, Mr. Ben? Oh, definitely. Like there's ash and there's pyroclastic material mm -hmm. and lava and all kinds of stuff. But where does all that stuff go when it comes out? Hmm. Well, some probably goes up in the air and some of it probably the, the thicker stuff maybe oozes down the side and maybe makes that characteristic kind of yeah. cone shape. Because once that, that lava cools, mm -hmm. right, it's going to solidify and create a rock. And for every eruption, mm -hmm. right, that is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. That mountain's going to grow. Mm -hmm. right? So, again, we're looking kind of like at that dome they were talking about in the last slide. It's a three-dimensional exactly. thing. But instead of punching up, um, as Mr. Baldwin showed, it's more like pushing up and then coming down in all directions. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. Uh, Island Arc. We've talked about these before. Mm -hmm. right? This one, though, you you have... Instead of the last one, we had what continental oceanic. We got two chunks of oceanic, mm -hmm. but one happens to be what a little more dense. A little dense. bit more dense. So they're gonna drag each other down into a big trench. Uh -huh. Eventually, one goes down and melts, and then a series right up there of volcanoes kind of pops up, and they be yeah. a series of like islands all in a yeah, row. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. would be the island arc. So the arc is going to be like a, a comma or an arc shape in math class. Mm -hmm. Cause when one pushes down, they always have kind of that comma shape. Yeah, and they're going to form the same way as we saw in the last volcanic mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, continuous eruptions and then building and building on top of the existing volcano. So these would probably be what near the continent, but there'd be ocean on both sides to yep. make them islands, and mm -hmm. they would be kind of all in a row, yeah. kind of like in a comma shape. Yeah, and you know we have some examples up here. We would see those in uh, Tonga, mm -hmm. Mariana, and then the Aleutian Islands near Alaska. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, the next one here, a batholith. What's a batholith? Sounds Mr. like a ben? big bath of tub, like a bath of tub of magma underground. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. So is it possible that sometimes that magma tries to get up but it can't escape? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, let's actually go ahead and read this definition. Results from the emplacement of large volume of magma that cools and crystallizes beneath the surface, later exposed by erosion. Hmm. So it's kind of like you have pressure, like a volcano, Yeah. and it might even lift some of the layers, but it never breaks free. Uh -huh. So it comes up, it's really hot, it tries to get out, but the rocks above it are too strong and they hold it. Mm -hmm. And then really over a long period of time, that eventually cool, or cools off and you get this big solid blob, like a blister yeah. of rock underneath the ground. Uh huh. And then over time... That the gets eroded away mm -hmm. in the surface eventually. And so then you see this really hard, resistant, like, chunk of rock sticking up. Mm -hmm. That'd be something kind of neat to rock climb, wouldn't it? It would be, yeah. That would be real neat to rock climb. Uh, some examples yeah. that we have here are um, uh, the Sierra Nevada Range, Canadian Coast Range, and then there's an Idaho batholith as well. 
This one, I think, is half dome because it's kind of half That's of right. a dome. Um, we're going to learn about glaciers later on. They did something there, but that would kind of like be that's half of one of these batholiths. Yeah, and then exfoliation as well we're going to talk about later mm -hmm. on. That's pretty commonplace with these batholiths. Okay, and so the outside would be exfoliated, and there's what you're left over with the, uh, the pointy yeah. part in the middle. Ooh, terrain accretion. Huh. So, what, we're over here on the Pacific Coast, mm -hmm. and we can't see it, but isn't this where they had a convergent boundary where, like, those little plates, like the Juan de Fuca plate, is yeah. kind of going under? Yeah, it is. There is a subduction zone there, and actually, there's a lot of volcanoes up around there. There's a, there's a real famous one that actually erupted the mm -hmm. year I was born, Mr. Ben. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, back in 1980. Mount St. Helens? Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Man. Was, Just, uh, I was only a couple months old when that happened. That was, that was Time high. flies. Mm. All right, so uh, we've got small crustal fragments collide and merge with larger continental masses. Um, accreted crustal blocks are called terrains. Accretion of larger fragments may result uh, in formation of mountain range, and we got a couple of examples there as well. Um, you cook, don't you? I do sometimes, yeah. Well, like, if have you ever used a cheese grater before? I have. Okay, so this would kind of be like the one plate going down. So if mm -hmm. it was to go down there, not all of it maybe comes down so easy. Like in a cheese grater, as that goes down, you get like a thin kind of scrunched up piece mm -hmm. on top. Could that be these little terrains, kind of what's left over from these plates as they're yeah. diving down? Sure. So these little terrains right here get accreted or stuck to the edge of the United States. So maybe a while ago, the United States wasn't this far out. Maybe there's stuff here from pieces of um, the plates that came from the Pacific getting jammed in. Yeah, and that's actually true. The United States, or even all of North America, wasn't as big as it is today. Mm -hmm. And back way, way back when, talking mm -hmm. billions of years ago, uh, there was a lot of island arcs in and around North America. Mm -hmm. And as and tectonic activity was a lot more active back then, a lot of these island arcs just kind of glommed together. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of convergent boundaries in and around the United States that actually made it grow and get bigger. Wow, it looks like we're getting it tough because Africa came by and smacked us here and made the Appalachian Mountains mm -hmm. by compression. And then we're getting hit over on this side, too, yeah. and we're getting a different kind of mountain over here from these terrains being accreted. And all these different um, mountain building periods are all referred to as orogenies that we had talked about way, way in the beginning of the segment. All right. And some of the oldest rock in North America, part of the original continent, can be found just north of here in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to kind of hold that together. That is. That's a lot of time. stuff. Five mountain types, and then you know, a quick look at the history of North America. We're trying to figure out where they, uh, you know, where they fit in on the earth. Yeah, I think they can do it. I think so too. I'm, I've got confidence in them. All right, quick mastery check here. Identify an example of each type of mountain. Provide the following information: type of mountain, picture, description of how it formed, association with the plate boundary what type and where it is located. So one of the five types, and then uh -huh. like a picture, like what it would look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Description, like what, convergent, you know, that kind of well, thing. Well, how it forms. So I think just more the specifics, once you identify the mountain, mm -hmm. then exactly what type of mountain it is and, and some of the stuff we had talked about in the previous slides, and then the association with the plate boundary, some of the forces maybe that contributed to its, its being. Okay, so description might be they come together, but then like one goes down and then exactly stuff. got it. And then uh, we're going to put all that information um, in a Google Doc, and then we're going to display it on our ePortfolio site. Wow. And this, all this information is going to be really handy uh, in the uh, activity we're going to do in class with Google Earth. So some of those things that uh, screenshots maybe or some of the their hard work that they do in Google Earth might be able to put directly into their ePortfolio that shows this stuff. Yeah, definitely. Wow, their, their portfolio is going to be something else. It is. Really a sight to see. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody, and um, let's get ready for tomorrow's activity. Can't wait to see you all. All right, thank you.